Let's try to count the total number of possibilities for passwords where the passwords are kind of short, just for illustrative purposes, either one, two, or three letters long. And that the only symbols I can put in my passwords are going to be lowercase letters. So there's 26 different possibilities for any letter and they can slot into either one, two, or three letter long passwords. So how many passwords are there here? Now, there are three subcases within this problem. There's the problem, how many one letter passwords are there? There's the problem, how many two letter passwords are there? And there's the problem, how many three letter problems are there? So let's try to solve those three different subcases, and then we're gonna try to combine them at the end to one answer to this larger problem. So the first case is, how can I create a one letter password? Well, there's only 26 possibilities. I've got 26 letters to put into one slot. So there's one out of 26 different cases for a given password. So let's look at the one letter spot first. Well, there's only one thing to fill. I've got 26 different possibilities that I could put in for my one letter long password. So there's only a total of 26 possibilities. Okay, that was relatively simple. What about the two letter scenario? Well, now I've got two letters. There's 26 possibilities I can put in for that first letter. And then there's 26 possibilities I can put in for that second letter as well. And so because they're independent, I don't care if they repeat, I don't care if the password is AA for instance, then everything's independent here, and I just multiply them out. There's 26 times 26, or 26 squared possibilities. And the same is true in the three letter case. So I've got three different buckets now. There's 26 in the first, 26 in the second, 26 in the third. I multiply them according to my multiplication rule, and so I get 26 to the power of three different possibilities. And then the a final answer, what are the total number of pass passwords, if I'm allowing one letter passwords, two letter passwords, and three letter passwords, then I'm just going to sum up these three cases. That's how many one, two, and three there are. So I'm gonna say that my total is the sum of those three cases. It's gonna be the 26 to the one, plus the 26 squared, plus the 26 cubed, and if you compute it out, you get this number, 18,278 different passwords. So, it's a big number, but still not that big. Still, we've got really relatively weak passwords, only 18 and change thousand possibilities when I'm only using letters and I'm only using one, two, or three letter passwords, which of course is not what we use. Now we're using eight or more depending on your application. Now, what was key about this example was that the three different cases, and I called them S1, S2, and S3, sort of three different sub-sample spaces, that those were completely independent. They didn't overlap. Every password is either one letter long or it's two letters long. There's, there's no passwords that overlap here that are both cases. This idea is something referred to as disjointness. So this is something we could have defined back when we were doing set theory, but we're gonna define it now because this is when we need it. When you've got two different sets, A and B, and that they don't overlap, that their intersection is empty, we're gonna to refer to the notion of a disjoint union. And we're gonna denote it, it's kinda of like the union symbol, but it's squarer. It's like a square union symbol. We call that the disjoint union of A and B. And visually, we can think of it like this. I have two sets, my A and my B. I think of them as being disjoint because they have no intersection, right? There's no overlap here. I've got the free space in the middle where my hand can be seen. And then I could consider what is the total number of things in A and B? Well, then it's just these two individual things. I add up the A's and I add up the B's. So my theorem is this. When I have a disjoint union, when my sample space can be broken up as to a disjoint union of two things, then the number in my larger sample space, my, my S, is just the sum of the two things. I figure out how many things were there in S1, how many things were there in S2, and I add the two of those things together. So in the example that we had seen, we actually have a triple disjoint union. There's no overlaps. 
The S1 and the S2, their intersection is empty. And the S1 and the S3, their intersection is empty. And finally, the S2 and the S3, their intersection is empty. Every one of these passwords is either one, two, or three, and there's none that are both one and two letters long. It wouldn't make any sense. So these three, S1, S2, S3, these three sub-sample spaces are going to be disjoint. And so in the nomenclature of our disjoint union, we can say that our total sample space is S1 disjoint union S2 disjoint union S3. And by the formula, I can say that the total number is the sum of those three things. The n of S1, the n of the S2, the n of the S3, and that is precisely what we computed out before. So in other words, the logic that we saw in this password example, it generalizes into this larger property.